حين يصفق الجمهور لساعة وعشرين دقيقة وينادي الفنان سبعة وثمانين مرة للعودة إلى المسرح في احتفال واحد فلا شك أن هذا يعني أنه فنان لن يتكرر نشعر لحظة أن بلاسيدو دومينغو لا ينتمي إلى هوية محددة وكأنه ابن كل تلك الأوطان التي زارها وملأ مسارحها بصوته في رصيده أكثر من خمسين أوبرا مسجلة وأكثر من مائة وعشرين دورا في مسرحيات أوبرالية عالمية تقمسها باحتراف عال فزاد أوبرا كارمن والتوسكا ولترافياتا ولبوام روعة وجمالها مساء الخير صوت عابر للقارات يشغل أهل البلد وإعلامه أين محل في الشرق كما في لبنان وطوكيو أو في الغرب كما في فيينا وهامبورغ وبينوس آيرس من دون أن ننسى بلدها إسبانيا والمكسيك التي انتقل إليها وهو في سن الثامنة في قبرص التقيناه قبل سنوات أي قبل أحيائه حفلته الأولى في معلبك وبعد الفاصل تأتي التفاصيل عام 2011 أحيا دومينغو أوبراليا في موسكو وهو يطوي عامه السبعين الذي احتفل به بداية العام على وقع تهنئة رسمية مكسيكية وهو منذ أن بدأ مسيرته الفنية يطبع بصمات لا يمكن أن يمحوها التاريخ على مر العصور من تلك البصمات كانت مشاركته في مهرجانات بعلبك حيث تكاملت عظمة صوته مع عظمة المكان من هناك من بعلبك انطلقنا بالحديث وصف كيف استفاق ذات الصباح في الفندق المقابل لقلعتها ليفتح عينيه على التاريخ الروماني القديم فضيفنا فنان بكل معنى الكلمة ويقدر الجمال أينما كان وبأي شكل أطل singing for Baalbek festival and of course it's a magic place it's an absolutely unbelievable atmosphere and uh, the way these temples uh, all this unbelievable 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 Jupiter and Bacchus the way they are maintained uh, I think it's unique mm. I, I think it's one of the marvelous marvels of, marvels of the world for me you mm. know it is It is absolutely, absolutely astounding. I mean, and, and uh, I remember the night before I sang in Valbeck, I stayed in, in a hotel just across. And just to wake up morning and see in front of you this unbelievable Roman wall, you know, it, mm. is, it was fantastic. So it's the prestige of the Well, the festival has been great. 50 years are very important. And I know that May is doing a tremendous, tremendous work. I want to congratulate her personally for all what she has done and uh, for the way she treats us, the way she really makes us feel at home. And how much more uh, I'm looking to go back. There is nothing, nothing more impressive than nature. Itself, yes. I mean, when you see the, when you see the stars, when you see the moon, when you see the sun, rising or going down, and uh, you see something in the humans, and with the humans, those days were able to create. Then you know that there is a God. You know that uh, then he, then he has created everything. Then he has made possible for the humans to imagine how to do those things you know I mean today with all the advance of civilization and technology things are quickly things are cyber do you when you start thinking the amount of people that they were working to build that the time consuming and was that the people that probably lost their lives working there and then you see this in front of the natural 
natural beauty of the sun and you see this this unbelievable view i think that you are lucky to to leave you are lucky to be there mm -hmm. and uh, you are, it's something that you are hoping that you will see it again without any 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 doubt do you think that uh, jupiter and bahus uh, temples were able to wake up something latent or dormant in you well i i think that i uh, you just feel very much uh, humble you just feel very much that uh, i mean we are part of this big big wall feel it by by wonderful things and then what you do which is a privilege which is to make people happy and people come there with a combination of seeing the place and coming to listen to you so i think it's it's a big big honor and i, I say it as an artist a privilege to make people happy in those around us especially mm. we have a marvelous dinner after right there i don't even know how they allow it to have just right there near all these columns sometimes you see so there are so many it's so much that sometimes you, you you are afraid and some of the things they are going to to be deteriorated they are going to be destroyed because it's so much you you see so many of the capitals, some, you know, parts of the, of the roof, and they have fallen down. So you see parts of the roof on, you know, which is kind of amazing. مع أن الحديث بدأ من عظمة المكان والحدث بعد بك، فإن ضيفنا لم يخفي شعوره بمدى تواضعه أمام تلك العظمة. لنكتشف أثناء المقابلة أن التواضع من طبع عظيم الأوبرا دومينغو. الألقاب لم تسكره. هذه الألقاب التي منحته إياها كبريات الصحف العالمية حين لقبته بملك الأوبرا وأعظم مغني الأوبرا لي في التاريخ المعاصر فهو بدأ أنه يغني لحبه للغناء وليس سعيا وراء شهرة أو كسب مادي لذلك الغناء هو حياته كما يقال يتفرغ له ولكن من دون أن يصف النظر عن أمور أخرى يحبها yes. Singing is, uh... A very important part of my life, you know. So I think the family is as important as the career, and also the music. Generally speaking, my my conducting the fact that I direct two opera houses and the general director of the Washington National Opera and the Los Angeles Opera, and uh, my competition my involvement with young singers. And then the fact that I still have time, even if it doesn't seem to follow events, I go a lot to the theater, I go to sports, I love very much Formula One, football, tennis, golf. I uh, I am aware of the problems of the world and I wish they don't exist. I always say it in the 21st century, we should be mature to live all in peace. And this is something that we should uh, all look forward, you know, and this rather urgent, important, is not possible, it's not possible that we cannot find peace. And this is my great hope, absolutely. This is a, this is a, um, a everyday work, everyday job, everyday just study. I feel like I am in the new university still. You always see me with a book under my arm, with a score under my arm, and always learning something new. So I think the mind is, is very alert. ربما لذلك يشعر محاور التنور أن لديه وقتا قليلا لمحاورته وأنه في الدقائق التي يستعيد بها معه محطات من حياته يكون قد استوقفه عن إتمام عمل ما لا سيما وأن دومينغو هو مغن وقائد أوركسترا ومدير فني في كلام أدق هو ليس بالشعور بل هو شرط من شروط المقابلة التي يفرضها فريق عمله دقائق مع الفاصل هي أيضا مفروضة علينا متابع بعدها
يقول دومينغو أن قدرنا يتأثر بقدرة أكتافنا على الحمل وهو يؤكد أن أكتافه مستعدة لأثقال كبيرة ربما كان ذلك وراء شعوره بالمسؤولية تجاه كواريث وحالات إنسانية صادفته في حياته منها الزلزال الذي أصاب المكسيك في العام 1985 والذي خطف أرواحا كثيرة منهم أقارب التنار فكان أن غنى مرارا لمساعدة ضحايا ذاك الزلزال وأهاليهم وقد أهداهم حفلات كثيرة تماما كما غنى إلى جانب خوسي كاريراس ولوتشيانو باباروتي في حفل افتتاح كأس العالم في روما في العام 1990 والذي عاد ريعه لمؤسسة كاريراس لمعالجة اللوكيميا تجربة أعيدت عدة مرات فاجتمع التنور الثلاثة على مسرح واحد لا سيما في ثلاثة احتفالات لاختتام كأس العالم إلى الحفلات الريعية يدرك دومينغو أنه بالغناء يشفي نفسه كما يشفي كثيرين حين يستمعون إليه I have received so many letters of people that they have had an accident and they have been like four months in bed in a hospital and at home and they say they, they, what they found the strength into listening to the recordings that I have done, seeing DVDs and uh, many, many, many letters that you receive what the music make to them and in any moment of the problems what uh, my singing has made to them. So this is a big, big, big satisfaction and privilege. Well, my shoulders, as you see, are, are broad. I, I have lost weight, but still they're heavy. They are heavy and they have a lot of, of strength to, at least to carry the work, you know. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, I'm able to do a lot of work. And I always say, you know, it depends how broad are your shoulders. So. I think they are broad enough to resist the work. كتب العديد من النقاد الفنيين أن دومينغو هو أكثر من يملك تقنية في الغناء. هو يقول: I try to keep the youth in the voice. I try to 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 sing with the technique, with the support. And uh, let's see how much more time I'll be able to sing. I'll be happy any time. Even if I have to stop tomorrow, I'll be happy. I will go on my knees. And say thanks to God because of what He made me do. مع هذا لا يخفي التنور أن الصوت قد يخون الفنان. The voice is a is the most extraordinary, beautiful, jealous woman. You know, so if you don't treat her well, she is going to be angry, and then doesn't respond. You have to you have to live kind of the the life of a very disciplined athlete. And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the same thing for a singer. I think that, first of all, the fact of life, which is wonderful, but life is sweet and sour constantly. Sometimes uh, for things that happen, sometimes we make it more difficult, you know, and sometimes nothing happens. But you have to be ready. But one thing is this. All these troubles, you have to solve it. The public doesn't want to know it. The public never should know about your problems. When you go out there, you have to make the people happy. And that's the privilege for an artist. But that's a must also for an artist. People don't want to know anything. They don't want to know. If you are tired, they don't want to know if you are sick. They don't want to know if you have a personal problem. When you are out there, they are coming to enjoy it because they want to forget about their problems. Say, OK, so he's not going to bring us now his problems. So leave your problems at home. So when you perform, that's it. And basically, I am, thank you, thanks to God, you know, I am a happy person and I think I can project that when I perform. من البديهي القول أن ما صنع دومينغو ليس صوته فقط ولكن هل هي الإرادة بالنجاح أو الموهبة أو الذكاء في إدارة أعماله أم هي الأدوار التي لعبها هو يقول The power is important The talent is important You know 
to work. All the things involved, even today is important, all the, all the public relations. It's a, it's a new thing. You know, before you used to do something, maybe the whole world, if something went right or wrong, they know it. Sometimes in other places. Today you are sure that what you are doing in any city is known. One hour later, all around the world, through the internet, you know, so it is, that's, that's the, the speed that things are going today. So it is, it is more exposed anything than you do, because it goes everywhere. You were singing in a theater of 2,000 people, something might be wrong, they will know it. Those 2,000 people, maybe the newspapers, people that read it today, everybody knows it, you know, one hour later. So this is the advance of of uh, technology which you don't want to have, but it's the way it goes. لا يبدو أن التنور الإسباني يملك خطة للمستقبل باستثناء عدد من الحفلات والأوبرا المعاونة أوبراليًا في روسيا. أما كيف سينهي مسيرته الفنية؟ فهذا ما لا يعرفه بعد. I don't know the day then that will come. It could be two ways, two different ways. Either could be to do a final tour, different places. Another one, it could be, I could think that I feel one day, and I just go in front of the public and say, ladies and gentlemen, this was my last performance. I don't know what is going to come next, the, the earlier, you know. I think when I will stop singing opera, I still will do a lot of concerts, so then I can come to Baalbek to sing and conduct without any problem finding the dates. هناك مسألتان تجعلنا شبه أكيدين أن دومينغو لن يغادر المسرح بسهولة. أولا حبه للغناء وثانيا تصفيق الجمهور الحاد الذي ينجح دائما في إعادته من الكواليس إلى تحت الأضواء ساعة الاعتزال لم تحن بعد فصوت التنور ما زال قويا وهو ما زال يحصد العديد من الجوائز كان آخرها جائزة خاصة من الرئيس المكسيكي فيليبي كالديرون لمناسبة عيد ميلاده السبعين في 21 كانون الثاني الماضي والذكرى الخمسين على لاعبه أول دور بطولي أوبرالي إلى اللقاء